Chris with HobbyKing.com and today we have the Quantum Head Tracker. Now before we jump into this, I want to give a big thanks out to Dennis Fry and Mark Mansour for the development of this project. This actually started off in RC Groups as a DIY head tracking unit. Now what uh, Quantum has done was actually taken that project and move it forward into a, a, a finalized project uh, or a finalized product itself. What they did was strip down the Arduino board and the IMU instead of having to DIY it and solder it together. We stripped it down and put it all onto a single board, uh, minimized it to just the pins and ports that you needed uh, to make it as small and compact as possible. We've cleaned it up a little bit and made it uh, more user friendly so now it is no longer a DIY project. You can just purchase this product uh, straight away. But a big thanks to Dennis Fry and Mark Mansour uh, for all their efforts on the open source uh, uh, DIY head tracker. So let's talk about a little bit uh, of the features that are involved in this particular uh, product. Now it's a full three axis, meaning not only does it have pitch, it has, uh, um, they call it uh, pan, I, I call it yaw, but it has pan as well as tilt on the head, so a full three axis. And one of the really nice features that really sets it aside from most uh, head trackers on the market um, uh, is that it has a compass in it. Now the compass compensates for gyro drift. Gyros naturally with heat and, and change uh, naturally have it over time a progressive drift and they drift away. And that's why on early head trackers you always had to recenter using a button of some kind to recenter it up because they would drift over time. Or they would lose their position if you move too far beyond their normal extents and they would get confused. The gyro corrects for all that because it always knows its position to north using you know, just, a, just the compass. And then it would go ahead and uh, adjust for the gyros itself. So it's a drift free head tracking unit. So three axis, drift free. Super clean, super small. Now it was initially uh, designed in this package to go right into the Quantum uh, V2s. It slips right into the top. It has the button for the, uh, the zeroing right over here for the initial uh, when you put on your goggles and zero it out when you sit down. Um, but it can be adapted to anything uh, from other goggles to even just tracking for puppeteering, meaning you could strap it to your arm and, and if you had a robot, use it for puppeteering itself. But uh, a really nice clean package. Now it has really intricate or not intricate but uh, developed a GUI uh, that allows you to change a bunch of settings um, which also sets it aside from most of the head trackers you can map your PPM channels uh, if you want to do that you can uh, uh, reverse you can set up your endpoints uh, calibration all via this uh, easy to use GUI which we'll demonstrate here in a second but it also comes with all the cables and a few other uh, neat tricks up its sleeve so normally on a head tracker after you put your goggles on people naturally have like a normal stance when they fly FPV whether it be head down head up or you're sitting down in a chair but if it was just to always to pick a, a neutral zero point when you sit down if your head is nor naturally down uh, the cameras are going to be putting putting your head down so you've got to push the button one time to get it to zero out so we have that button right here on the top. But a lot of times, uh, you know, that's not convenient to try and reach up and hit on the transmitter. So what we've actually included was a secondary remote button that you uh, can just tape right onto your transmitter itself, tape it anywhere that it's easy access for you so you can click and zero out the head tracker for its neutral position. Comes with a very long extension cable to allow that to go down to that transmitter to make that very, very convenient. Uh, besides that, it comes with two cables, uh, which would be your Futaba uh, 9XR style cable. And what's nice about this particular cable is it provides power for the head tracker directly via the cable. You're flying on like say a Tyrannus or a JR, we've got the 3.5 included cable in that. Has a, a JST and you can put two to four cells directly into this. Um, uh, and uh, the connection right here for the head tracker. So it's got cables for pretty much every radio on the market as well as the addition of the centering button itself. You don't have to use this remote one if you don't want to. It has a button right on here that's just a, a secondary. We try to make it nice and convenient. Once you put your goggles on and you have your transmitter, there's no reason to try to take them off or reach up here to reset your zero point on that head tracker itself. So we've talked about some of the features. We talked about Dennis Fry and Mark Masur on the development of the head tracker. Let's go ahead and plug it in and do a quick demonstration on this. Now, normally head trackers will plug into your transmitter via its trainer port and it maps the PPM channel so you're using it just like it was a secondary or a trainer radio going on in and that's how you're able to get these uh, plugged in. Now you're able to map those PPM channels like I was uh, mentioning. Uh, in this case, uh, we've got a six channel receiver so I'm actually using a couple of the other channels and you can just go right into any computer radio and, and, and map those out as well as in the GUI, map those out. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to plug it into the 9XR. via the trainer, going to plug this in, give it a second to initialize, there it is, and it's gonna start tracking. Now, like I was mentioning, you have gotta set up your zero point, and so what I'm gonna do is just set it on the table here, and when I push the button, you're gonna actually see it zero it out. 
So there it is, and now that is its new zero point. Like I was mentioning, if you naturally fly FPV and you have it on and you're ready to start, you push the button one time and that's now your zero point for your camera. Now let's talk about the actual tracking itself. I mentioned it's three axis, uh, drift free. So I'm gonna go side to side, up, down, and you also have roll and it tracks that right along there. Now what is one of the real interesting things about this tracker is that a normal tracker, when you go beyond its normal motion or range of motion, it loses its position, it beeps, it'll have to come back to center. This one does not because it has a compass, it continues to track its motion. And when you come back into a normal range of what it is able to track uh, via the servos, it's gonna pick right back up. So I'm going to zero this, I'm gonna rotate the tracker and you can see the servo stops right there and I'm actually continued past that. But I'm gonna bring it right back to the front and you can see it picks right back up and it's facing forward. I'm gonna come beyond its means and rotate it all the way around and you can see it uh, when I come back forward, it picks it right back on up, no beeping there, same all the way down. Beyond its means, rotated, I'm gonna pick it right back up and there it is level. Same, rotate it back. Now, if you were to continue to rotate all the way around, it's actually gonna pick up and jump to the other side and pick up right where you picked off and came right on back there. So you can see, it's got full rotation and of course I'm shaking when I'm holding that and those are low resolution servos. But if I set this down and stop touching it. You can see how steady and uh, that is. It's not moving at all. There's no drift in it whatsoever. So you can see that's just me shaking and I'm just going to touch that and pick it up again. And you can see it's moving again. So there it is. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the GUI and show you how easy it is to set this up for any transmitter. Uh, endpoints adjustments, you don't have to have a computer radio for this. Pretty much any radio that has a trainer port input on it, you can set this up. All right, so the first thing you need to do is go ahead and go to the files tab of the product itself, jump into the, uh, the files, download the zip file, which has our GUI. Once you download that file, it's gonna be a, a zip file, just unzip it, and you're gonna have head tracker GUI. Go ahead and click on that application and go ahead and get it open. Go ahead and slide this over to our center screen and so we can take a look. First thing we need to do is go ahead and connect it. Now, if you've had Arduino uh, products in the past or Arduino-based uh, uh, things, you'll have the drivers already loaded. But uh, if not, just go ahead and plug it in. It's gonna find it. If you don't have the drivers, it'll go ahead and load those up for you. So uh, as soon as it connects, I'm gonna go ahead and click the COM port. Uh, it should be the, uh, the one uh, uh, selected unless you have more COM ports. You can just take a look at which one it, it connected as. In this case, it's COM port 80. I'm gonna click connect. And pretty much it's connected. Way we, that you can see if it's uh, connected is you can come down here and click start plot and you can actually see it starting to map. As you move it around, you can actually see the graphs changing, uh, and that's the, uh, the, the gyro and the, the compass and magnometer that it's actually tracking right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that plot. First thing you want to do is go ahead and calibrate it out. Anytime it's uh, brand new, you need to calibrate it. And what that's doing is taking the offset between the compass and the accelerometer and, and creating a, a center point between these two. It's very uh, simple to do, um, and it shows you in, in it via the pictures. It's very uh, straightforward. So I'm just gonna go right here to calibrate and click calibrate. You just click next, and you follow the pictures itself. It's the exact same as in the pictures. So it has the uh, USB cable, and it says to lay it flat. You click start, or next, I'm sorry. Once you click next, it tells you to rotate it around your uh, yaw or your uh, pan axis. So I'm just gonna rotate that around. Once I've rotated it, you're gonna click next. Now it's uh, pitch, we go that direction. Click next, and now it is tilt. And click next. Uh, now it's gonna record those offsets, just click next, and finish. And you're all set, it's done and it has been calibrated out. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero this out. And you can see it is tracking and we shouldn't have any drift problems. If you have drift issues, just recalibrate it. Once it's done, you never need to do this again. Um, now, some of the other settings that we're gonna talk about right over here. In the top, uh, it has different settings that allow you to uh, do filtering, uh, gyro weight versus accelerometer versus uh, the, uh, the compass. Uh, you know, basically that's to compensate for the drift if you're in a very heavy, uh, um, noise with magnetic uh, fields and things like that, you might wanna reduce that or increase it. Uh, there's a lot of explanation on all these settings on the RC groups uh, for this uh, DIY project. 
but for the most part, we found that you don't need to mess with those. Uh, they're dialed right in uh, from right from the factory. I wouldn't change any of those. Really, uh, over here, it has some numbers, and if you know these numbers, you can type them in manually, but it has really nice sliders, and these sliders uh, dictate what these numbers are. So it's very easy just to use these sliders to set up your head tracker. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the head tracker right here, and this is mimicking, uh, obviously it wouldn't be a head, it'd be your camera. I'm gonna press the button, zero it out forward. Now, if you needed to naturally set up a zero point for the head tracker, if you had a nice computer radio, you could go ahead and, and do some offsets and some trims, but you can do it right in here. If I naturally needed this head tilted, or the camera in this case, uh, tilted over because I, I missed a tooth on my, on my servo, you can come right over here to tilt and I can adjust that over. I'm gonna store the setting and you can actually see that that has changed. Um, uh, actually, that was pan tilt. I'm gonna move that back. Um, and there we go, and you just change it. So basically that's a zero point, you set your zero points. Next is end points on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my pan setting, which is, uh, I, I call it yaw, which is back and forth. And right now you can actually see if I change that, um, oh, I need to reverse this because I reset it. Reverse it, right the setting. Okay, so right over here, let me jump into that. Right over here, if you find that it's reversed, you can see it's reversed in this situation. I can actually just click on pan, uh, click the reverse, store settings, and now it's going the right way. So very easy to set up for that. So that's that one. So right over here is our endpoint adjustment. So you can see how much uh, it goes until it locks. Now you don't want to deadhead a servo, meaning that it hits its point and it sits there buzzing because it's locked out at a single point. So what you want to do is find the normal range for where your camera can move, and you can come right in here and you can adjust it, your, your right side and your left side. So if I turn these both sides all the way down, uh, store the settings, watch. You can see it only moves this far. I can keep moving this tracker and it limits how far it's, it's moving in this, in this particular axis. If I crank it all the way back up, store settings, now it moves to the servo's full extent. So it's very easy to set up all your axes for your camera to fit within the range of motion uh, of your servos as well as uh, optically how you want it to see. Maybe there's something in the way you don't want to necessarily pick up uh, when you're, you're picking or moving your head around. Next is the gain. Now this is a biggie. This I think is where most people uh, do their adjustments. And what that is is how much you have to track your head versus how much the actual uh, the camera itself is moving. So some people move their heads a lot. They want to be able to have a really fine adjustment, uh, natural adjustment. And some people don't move their heads very much but need that full sweep of the camera itself. This also uh, uh, gives you a little bit of uh, adjustment if you have a wide angle of view or a narrow angle of view on your camera so it doesn't natural meet your natural vision you might want to actually increase its throw versus your motion so it feels more natural. And I'll demonstrate that. So right now, if I move the tracker, it's pretty much a one-to-one -one on that. If I increase the gain on that, store the settings. Watch what happens, I'm gonna zero that out. And now you can see it is exaggerating the motion and I'm not having to move as far and it's increasing its motion. Well, I'll do it even further. and you can see it's super hyperactive versus this. Uh, so you wouldn't have to move your head very much at all to, uh, to get full pan and tilt and, and, and look around your aircraft. So you get to dial that in and it's a live setting so you can actually do it while it's plugged in uh, and looking out your camera and so you can figure out what's best for you. Save, save, save. Once you're done, uh, you just disconnect. So I'm actually gonna turn this back down. Normal range, store the settings. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is rate back over here. And this is uh, another uh, problem that most head trackers have had out there is, and that is setting it up to work with your radio. Now when you plug this in, it plugged in as a trainer port. So you can pick up your pan, your tilt, and your roll. Most people will probably just fly with a two axis head tracker uh, or even a single axis head tracker, uh, especially if you have say like a six channel receiver and you only have one available channel because you've got your four uh, flight axes uh, and throttle or thrust uh, and then you've got a flight mode switch and then you've only got one available extra channel maybe for just a, a pan or yaw. Um, you, what you can do is just go ahead and map that and all you gotta do is click from the drop down and pick what channel you want that map to, select it, save that setting and that's gonna put it into your PPM stream automatically via your trainer port. So it's really that simple to set up for channel mapping. And say you've plugged in servos to different things, you don't wanna have to unplug it, you can switch them around right over here, put this on six and tilt on channel five uh, just depending on how you plugged it into your servo. So it's very easy to set up this way. 
It doesn't take a, a lot to figure that out. Like I said, these numbers right here just reflect where these sliders are. The sliders give you a real nice GUI so you can just see where everything is. And right here on the bottom, it just reverses it if, uh, so you don't have to reverse the channel in your actual radio itself, especially since it's the incoming PPM. Uh, some radios don't have that ability. So if I wanted to uh, change uh, tilt necessarily, even though it's correct, I just click on the button for reverse store setting. Now you can see it's opposite of what I want. I'll just click this store setting, and now it's going the correct direction. Uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about the GUI. Now, I said there's a lot of information on the RC groups. Uh, there's a link to this uh, project, and you can actually read up on more of these settings. But as far as setup, you just endpoints, uh, the correct direction, calibrate it, and uh, map the channel to your transmitter. Uh, it shouldn't take you more than 10, 15 minutes to get this all up and running. And you can see here, sitting here static, it's absolutely not drifting, it's not moving at all. Go ahead and pick it up and it works on all three axes. So it's the perfect companion for our V2 goggles and it is super inexpensive, just like our goggles. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you guys next time.